Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast Success Without Corruption. Today with me it's Marko Pankowski, a researcher from Institute for Democracy. Hi Marko. Hi, Anelia. How are you? I'm fine. Fine, thank you. You? I'm also fine. Uh, first of all, uh, please introduce yourself and tell tell us more about your experience in the in the researches uh, about fighting the, the corruption in in our country and in the region. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Anelia. Uh, thank you also, you the Lance Crucial, for having me here and uh, addressing such an important uh, important issue. So um, my name is Marco. I'm a researcher at this for democracy in Skopje. Uh, within the institute we work on um, improving good governance, anti-corruption, European integration and also we do support uh, the work of the parliament. We try to explore the policies in these areas, offer policy recommendations and also build capacities of uh, institutions. Um, my work there touches upon all of these issues. Yet, uh, lately I focus mostly on monitoring national good governance and anti-corruption efforts and also assessing authoritarian influence uh, in the Western Balkans region. Uh, regarding anti-corruption, we monitor the work of the institutions in the system of anti-corruption. That is mostly the State Commission for uh, Prevention of Corruption, but also other uh, institutions. Uh, we support the oversight role of the, of the parliament over these uh, institutions. And uh, we also work on a project that aims to introduce anti-corruption education in high schools, which is something that uh, I believe we'll be able to talk later uh, in the discussion. So I think uh, in a nutshell, so yeah. Thanks Marco, thanks for, for, for accepting my, my invitation. And we will start with, with something more simple. Uh, what are the common mix, misconceptions of the citizen, especially the young people, about the, the corruption, according to your yeah. opinion? Mm. I mean, I wouldn't say there are, let's say, misconceptions, uh, but rather we can talk about what young people regard as corrupt behavior, uh, where it happens, and in which way they think corruption affects them. That's, that's also really important. Uh, you know, since corruption takes many forms, often it is hard to recognize. Uh, corruption could take subtle forms and do not always uh, require bribing, which is uh, mostly associated forms of uh, form of corruption. Uh, corruption could also take form of conflict of interest, nepotism, patronage, gifts, and so on. Uh, for example, in a field survey we've done recently uh, in seven schools, 75% uh, of the high school students do not recognize, for example, that taking private lessons with a professor who teaches to you the same subject at school could be a form of uh, corruption. Uh, another example, uh, buying a school book in order to get a mark easier with a certain teacher is not recognized as a corruption by 57% of the students. So these are just two of, uh, from countless real life examples of corruption that affect high school students and young people in general. And I think that young people should be able to recognize them and report them accordingly. Um, in an essence, uh, corruption understands abusing and trust power for personal gain. Uh, that is mostly, most widely accepted uh, definition. Uh, it is also important to know that um, corruption happens both in public and private sectors. It is not only that public administration or politicians could be corrupt, but it also involves business and it is present in entrepreneurship as well. Um, while the effects of corruption can often seem distant for young people, it actually affects our very lives and it's, uh, it's detrimental to democracy, human rights, environment, uh, economic development. It is also connected to conflict, crime and so on. And unfortunately, corruption disproportionately affects uh, vulnerable groups and poor segments the, of the society. So we can see that uh, corruption is a complex phenomenon uh, which has impact in real life and we should be able to recognize it and young people especially to recognize it properly and act upon it. Thanks. So my next question is closely related with, with what you were talking about. Uh, so do you consider that the system of values is affecting the youth engagement into the fight of a corruption. 
Uh, this is actually really hard uh, to, to determine. Um, we can connect some values with a particular action or corrupt behavior, but uh, it's really hard to establish causation there since there are many factors that contribute whether one person will engage in, uh, in corrupt behavior. Uh, but we know for, for, from our research is, well, we, one young person will confidently say that there should be a rule of law. If asked whether that person will help a friend if that means breaking a law, most of them will do so. Uh, also, if you talk about uh, reporting corruption, most people are willing to report it, but only if, if, if it affects them uh, personally. Uh, and there are many similar examples of conflicting values and prioritization of one value over the, over the other. Probably the easiest way to say this is that uh, while most of the people recognize good from bad, they tend to adjust their strategy according to the context. Uh, they may not approve corruption, but if they're faced with corruption pressure that is being asked for a bribe, for example, it is more likely that at least we'll consider their options to, to engage in corrupt, corruptive behavior. For example, in our national context, uh, while well, about a third of the young people are tolerant to corruption, more than two-thirds of the young people are prepared to give a bribe to get a job done. So this means that uh, they may not approve it in a normative sense, they don't think it is good, but many will adapt to the, to the, to the situation. And to follow up on this, do you consider that the citizen and youth participation, is it critical for combating the, the corruption? I would say that it's a crucial uh, component. Uh, general participation in uh, social and political life is a step forward for increased awareness on uh, how government and governance works. Uh, active citizens are more aware of their rights and the responsibilities and are more likely to push for uh, increased accountability of institutions. Uh, they're more likely to point out cases of wrongdoing and uh, also require relevant uh, sanctions. Uh, civic engagement will allow them to closely follow and uh, shape the, the decisions that affect them and their, their communities. Uh, it will also serve to their empowerment and could make the institutions you know, more, more hesitant to conduct corrupt, uh, corrupt practices. Uh, that's why many anti-corruption programs include a uh, civic engagement component inside, because that, that's really important. Uh, also, this is important because, for example, people coming from less empowered communities are more likely to be asked for bribe, and that is the case in our country as well. A uh, third of the population in, uh, in North Macedonia, for example, has been exposed to corruption pressure. Uh, out of which 80% have given a bribe. So once a person is exposed to corruption pressure or is asked for a bribe or any other form of corruption, most of the people, 80%, will actually engage in such, uh, in such behavior. So compared to, to other countries in the region, the corruption pressure is maybe lower in, in our country, but it is still, it is still uh, significant. In, in, in that regard, finding ways for increased civic engagement in formal and less formal ways, um, I think could be an effective way for young people to be more resilient to, to this corruption pressure. Uh, to be clear, this doesn't mean that all the forms of civic or youth engagement should involve thematic focus on corruption. Uh, actually, being engaged to volunteering, youth, fo youth work, uh, non-formal education in other fields as well, also contributes to this really important sense of uh, community. And that would make the young uh, person more res resistant to injustice, uh, including corruption. And I think that's, that's really important uh, when we try to empower young people in this regard. And my last question is about the mechanisms and tools for fighting the corruption. Which one are the most useful existing or what kind of mechanism and tools we need to, to build in the future in order to fight 
the corruption as a very a pressing issue in our region. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fighting fighting corruption always seems as an uphill battle, you know, as as phenomena that spares no country, regardless its uh, its stage of development. Uh, people are often discouraged to to engage uh, anything that has something to about. Uh, and that results with two, I would say, two problems. First, people are becoming tolerant to, to corruption. Uh, and second, they do not trust that the authorities could be successful in fighting. And, and this is a really dangerous situation, mm -hmm. and it, which is also visible uh, in our country as well. Um, the research suggests that one third of the population of North Macedonia, as said before, is tolerant for, for corruption. But this percentage is even higher for, for young people. It's about 10 percentage points higher for young people compared to, to other age groups. Uh, on the other hand, two thirds of the population do not believe that the government can, can substantially reduce, uh, reduce corruption. This is a data from a report we've done uh, recently within the Selby Regional Network for Anti-Corruption. Uh, and since the citizens do not believe their government is able to improve the situation, this reduces their expectation. And also they're less willing to push the government to conduct some, uh, to conduct some reforms in this regard. So I would say there are several tools that could help us work on this. Uh, but if you talk about young people, I would say first, uh, and we already touched upon it, uh, it is civic engagement. Uh, so citizens that are aware of their rights and responsibilities could be the core in the process of uh, fighting corruption. Uh, I believe uh, sincerely that no efforts done by the authorities or the civil society uh, will be successful if the citizens are not involved uh, in the process. Therefore, the, the, the young people that are currently in education or are entering the job market are the most suitable and honestly my only hope that, uh, that we can uh, improvements. Uh, in addition to, to civic engagement, I believe education remains the most powerful tool to empower young people in the fight against corruption. Uh, it is important that students are equipped with knowledge how to recognize corruption, to be aware of its consequences, and also as young people to recognize their role in the fight against this phenomenon. Um, in, in this direction, together with the Bureau for Development of Education, we have District for Democracy already work on developing on anti-corruption curriculum for high school students. And we do sincerely that, uh, hope that we will be able to start the pilot phase uh, in, in the following year. Um, the need for anti-corruption education is also highlighted in other national documents of the State Commission for Corruption corruption and so on. And um, it's really important regarding also to, to your point uh, what we should address, uh, we should change in the future. It's really important to get these institutions on board uh, when we talk about the role of young people in the fight against corruption. Uh, because when we talk about young people and corruption, we often talk without the institutions present. And I think that uh, future programs should aim to kind of bridge, uh, bridge this gap and uh, to involve young people in, in, in the process. Uh, because young people could play a crucial role in this regard mm -hmm. and um, we should develop already established mechanisms. Of here we talk about uh, local youth councils, uh, national youth organization forms and so on. Uh, and uh, also invent new ways uh, in order to increase the, the outreach of institutions and civil societies to young people. Uh, and uh, I think this is really important, especially in um, reaching to young people that currently do not enjoy any programs of youth engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that actually being able to sum up, being able to Bridge the gap between young people and institutions that talk about corruption and reaching out to young people that never enjoyed any similar programs before, I think uh, it's, it's the way, it's our way forward. 
Thank you, Marco, a lot. Uh, thank you for addressing and being willing to address this question, which is not quite popular among the among the young people. Yeah, <laughs> it is not. It is not at all. They are they are afraid to talk about it. So uh, it's very yeah. valuable when someone someone wants to address uh, what they are doing and what they should they should do. Sure. I mean, uh, it's uh, they recognize it uh, and. Uh, in a way, how maybe how it affects them, but maybe they will not be able to point. Okay, this is corruption. So mm -hmm. I think this this is something that we should work also further. Yes, to work on on, on their education and to work yeah. on their civic engagement into the processes in order to, to to try to fight the corruption because going towards uh, zero corruption is impossible, uh, according to my opinion. But I think that if we are willing to to fight against it and to speak about it that we will manage something in the future yeah, as young yeah. people. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marco, a lot. Thank you. And uh, looking forward for next cooperation and next interesting talks. Okay, thank you. Have a nice Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Bye.